Uh, Mr David Shoebridge. Mr Deputy President, when elected in 2011, the O'Farrell government had a clear mandate to make new laws to return planning powers to the community. They promised to move away from New South Wales Labor's corrupted planning laws and to forever bury Labor's notorious Part 3A of the Planning Act. So how has it all gone so wrong that just three years after that election, we now have a planning minister who is rummaging around in the darkest recesses of Labor's rotten planning laws to find powers he can use to deliver for developers through bypassing local communities and overriding local planning laws. In mid-2012, after 18 months of consultation, including an excellent report from Tim Moore and Ron Dyer, the government announced its direction for planning laws. Um, it, was a direct, it was a direction straight out of Labor's pro-developer playbook. When the O'Farrell government eventually took to Parliament this bill, it was plainly unacceptable. It represented a spectacular breach of the government's promise to return planning powers to the community. The proposed law would have systematically alienated the community from decision-making and made environmental, social and heritage considerations play second fiddle to the profits of developers in almost all planning matters. When this defective bill found its way to this upper house, the Greens worked with a majority of members in the chamber to try and knock some of the most offensive elements from the government's bill. These amendments didn't by any means fix the bill. But they did provide some marginal improvements by removing the new code accessible development proposal, by inserting affordable housing provisions and putting some balance back into applications for new or enlarged mines. When the amended bill went back to the lower house, however, rather than engage in discussions to improve the bill, Minister Hazard, in an emotive and angry speech, effectively walked away. It took real effort on the part of this government to burn off so much community goodwill in the planning area in so short a time. And the current impasse was clearly brought about by the poor management of the review and the reform process by Minister Hazard and his department. Convinced that they'd have the numbers to implement whatever final model they came up with, they ignored the results of their own consultation. And in the end, they produced a planning bill that only a property developer could love. And since November, the planning minister has made a number of statements indicating that he intends to reform the system, in his words, through the current laws. These are Labor's planning laws, and the worst parts of them at that. Just how will the minister abuse the existing laws to deliver his government's planning agenda? He has a number of undemocratic levers to hand, but his biggest one is to make changes to state environmental planning policies, or SEPs. SEPs are instruments the planning minister can make at will. He simply signs a piece of paper and they become statewide laws that override any country, local, regional or statewide planning instruments. The minister can make SEPs to exclude certain classes of development from requiring development approval in the first place, to rezone entire areas for more intense development, or to remove a local council's planning powers from an identified urban growth area. Best of all, for a centralising and undemocratic government, these SEPs are not subject to any parliamentary scrutiny, with the upper house having no power to disallow them. And all at the stroke of a pen, with no requirement to consult and no democratic oversight. These are the kinds of powers that keep ICAC commissioners awake at night. They're the kinds of powers that send a cold chill through ordinary citizens. They're the kinds of powers that corporate scavengers and their accomplices in New South Wales politics love to keep on the books. And the ministers already abused these powers to expand the current set for exempt and compliant development to include whole new classes of development and degrade heritage protections to rezone large swathes of Epping Town Centre to deliver an urban activation precinct with oversized development contrary to local environment planning controls, to deliver for the mining industry by amending the Mining Petroleum Production and Extractive Industries set so that when any new mining development is considered in New South Wales, the principal concern for any approval body is the size of the resource, not the impacts on the community or the environment. Who knows what they'll do next? We do know that the minister intends to impose urban activation precincts in Randwick and Ryde. Other op options, no doubt, the government is considering are to amend SEP 71 on coastal protection, to remove restrictions on coastal development, yeah, yeah, yeah. to expand SEP 60 uh, uh, on exempt and compliant development to include larger and bigger impacting developments, to remove or limit the affordable housing provisions in SEP 70, and no doubt to strip down SEP 44 on koala habit habit habitat protection. The O'Farrell government's planning bill was exposed as a breach of their promise to return planning powers to the community. Now they've abandoned their bill but are still working to use the worst parts of Labor's corrupted planning laws to, de to, to deliver for the developer lobby. The people of New South Wales voted for something better. They deserve something better. 
the Greens remain committed to principal planning laws that will give the people of New South Wales what they deserve, not simply what Order. the biggest developers oh, demand.